start of day one in Budapest, day two of our trip. You'll get an apartment tour a little later. And we're taking this elevator? Oh yeah, because we're saving our feet. Are you enough? We started off our day with breakfast at Central Cavejas, which is one of just many really amazing coffee houses here in Budapest. They have such a coffee house culture, and we started out investigating this culture by going to Central Coffee House. Tip. If you see a church, stick your head in. A lot of them are really beautiful. On this spot, actually almost 10 years ago to the day, I uh, was tear gassed about right there um, after we came out to watch some of the demonstrations and protests going on. And the American Embassy is right over here. Interesting fact, Budapest is actually the scene of a lot of movies. Anything that can be set in a European city can be filmed in Budapest. It's pretty neat. Back to the old stomping grounds. I wanted to see all the new renovations at CEU, and I was not disappointed. It took a little bit, but we're inside of CEU now. This building's been completely redone, so it looks totally different. After much pushing and some help from a very nice librarian, we made our way to the new roof. There's my own personal hell. I thought I could give you an apartment tour real quick as I run upstairs with my jacket up. So here's the elevator. We're on three. Ancient today, high ceilings, coat closet. We have a very large bathroom, a nice shower and a washing machine. Nice little kitchen, everything is brand new and practical. A fridge. A living room. There is a television, though I don't think we're going to want to be watching too much Hungarian TV. The bedroom's nice. There's a bed down here. There's also a bed up there, and it's pretty big. Obviously, we're not using it, but it's very nice. They took advantage of the high, high ceilings. Um, there's good space for 
display the hem, which this is another reason to use those Amazon packing cubes because it's easy to like unpack and then repack. This is my towel from this one. But, very pretty. Now most European park nuts, you're not going to find they have an air conditioner because you just don't need it. So that is the heater and it does work very well. Good hot water this morning very quickly, so if you're ever in the best, I can definitely recommend staying here and I'll put the link to um, the All in 10 apartment uh, down below this video. So absolutely recommended. And we're about to go back out. Just putting my jacket down. So we personally think the weather is really nice and all the Hungarians are wrapped up like it's the dead of winter. Not a clue. So here is Square basically commemorates all of the military heroes. Um, that is Prince Arkad, a bunch of chieftains. They conquered the Carpathian Basin. That's the Archangel Gabriel, who legendarily offered the crown he was holding to Stephen, now 16, Hungary. And these are all different military leaders. Um, this was built in 1896 and commemorates the 1000th anniversary of the conquest of the Carpathian Basin. of the Magyars, the Hungarian people, and if you touch the pen, you're supposed to have good luck if you're a writer. Our next stop was the Terror House Museum, which sounds odd, and it is a very interesting and different museum. It focuses on two occupations, essentially, the communist occupation and the fascist occupation of Hungary and the atrocities that occurred under both of these regimes. It is a very different museum with very few things that are actually displayed. Instead, it's more of a museum of ideas and things that happened rather than things that you can touch. Being so, it had some very neat and different displays. I think more museums should be like this focused less on the things and more on the history and the ideas. We always search for fun little antique shops. You can really find some interesting things here that are a lot better and a lot more interesting than your normal tourist shtick. is a city of bridges, and this was just one of them. 
here we are looking at the Danube from the Savageshag Heath, which is the Freedom Bridge. Right next to Freedom Bridge, you have the Great Market Hall, which while it can be a little touristy, you have a lot of local shops mixed in. So on one hand, you see tourists looking over the goods, what they're going to take home. On the other hand, you see a lot of locals buying their meat and vegetables for dinner that night. And there's some really good sweets to be had. Dates, I think. One of the items on our bucket list is to eat at a Michelin star restaurant. And tonight, we did it. We went to Borconia Wine Kitchen, which is a new Michelin star restaurant in Budapest that's been getting a lot of press lately. And it was well deserved. You expect a Michelin star restaurant to be imposing, but this was small and relaxed. And the food, absolutely incredible. While my mama always said it was good to talk about money, I have to say we ate this entire meal for less than $150. Drinks, dinner, appetizer, desserts, and it's a Michelin star restaurant. This is a must eat if you are in Budapest. After dinner, we went back over to the wine festival, and it's good that we did because this boy right here was very happy. He traded a Birmingham patch for a Budapest police patch. 